This is Sound Medicine. News now about some very early research into a virus that may contain clues to prostate cancer or chronic fatigue syndrome. The virus is called XMRV, which stands for xenotrophic murine leukemia related virus. The term murine is important because it refers to the fact that the virus used to be found only in mice, but recently it's apparently made its way into humans as well. Sal Medicine's Dr. Kathy Miller spoke with Dr. Stephen Goff, a microbiologist at Columbia University, to learn more. Professor Stephen Goff, welcome to Sound Medicine. I'm glad to be here. So this new virus called XMRV was found about four years ago when researchers were looking for viruses that might be associated with prostate cancer. I think I read that their initial screen turned up a lot of possible viruses, What stood out about this XMRV? There was a gene uh, in the human population that uh, had been identified as giving people a tendency to get uh, prostate cancer. Um, It was a familial inherited gene, and uh, that gene turned out to be part of the innate immune system that we all have um, to fight viruses. So the implication of that finding was that, yes, there existed a familial tendency to inherit a cancer, a prostate cancer, and that tendency was linked to a failure to resist uh, viruses. So that implied maybe, hey, there was a virus that was causing prostate cancer in some subset of people who had uh, acquired this gene. So that was one of the very early uh, applications of the methods to look for a new virus. And they found this particular virus, XMRV, um, in a a substantial portion of the people that were susceptible um, by virtue of their uh, restricted immune system, essentially. So that was a very exciting finding. And this virus was therefore clearly something to study. And yes, you're right that they did find other viruses associated with this disease and many others, but um, nothing was as clear-cut as this virus seemed to be uh, with its association with prostate cancer. So has this virus been found associated with prostate cancer in people who don't have this familial disorder? Well, yes. I mean, so this virus has now been found in a wide range of people. The the prevalence is low. Uh, It's clearly not a very common uh, infection. Um, Prevalence just meaning you found it in some men with prostate cancer, but not most of them. And not, not, certainly not. That's right. It's a very small proportion of those uh, with prostate cancer. It has been found in healthy people as well. Um, Again, the levels are very low. So um, people don't quite know what to make of, of the f- results so far. Nobody is too excited because the, the prevalence is low, um, but uh, certainly the potential is, is there for this to be important. And uh, the basis for that statement is really the, the uh, knowledge we have of the virus uh, and its relatives in mice. So that's where we might ought to go next. So did this virus actually start in mice, or is it just related to a mouse virus? Well, it is very closely related to a mouse virus, and it's so closely related that we do think, indeed, that it probably had to have come from mice. Um, so this this virus is 98-plus percent identical in its, in its sequence and in all of its behaviors to a virus that we have known for... Uh, 30 years or more uh, in the mouse uh, genome and in mice. Uh, So that's part of what is exciting is that here we have a virus that we've known about for a long time and, you know, have been studying for a long time, um, more or less as an academic issue. Um, And now maybe this is, uh, or a close relative of it is actually important in, in human disease. So, uh, as you would imagine, everybody that's worked on this virus since the 70s is, is very energized and excited uh, to know 
uh, whether indeed this virus is really important uh, in, in human disease. You're listening to Sound Medicine. I'm Dr. Kathy Miller, and I'm talking with Columbia University microbiologist Stephen Goff about a newly discovered virus that may be linked to prostate cancer. Professor Goff, at this point, you have this association in a small portion of men with with prostate cancer, but no hard proof that the virus actually causes the disease. That's clearly true. That's very important to emphasize that we, although there is there may be an association of this virus in prostate cancer patients, there is no. Uh, clear understanding or indication that it's causal, and that that's important to say. So there are various mechanisms by which we know this virus or its relatives, its mouse relatives, um, cause disease, and the most common mechanism is uh, is a very interesting one and um, a very important one, and that is that this virus has the or its relatives in mice have the capability of inserting the viral DNA uh, into the host cell DNA in positions by, by chance uh, over the course of time um, at critical spots that initiate the tumor. And those critical spots are um, the spots where the next door gene is activated to cause the tumors. So we know this happens to cause leukemia in mice, and um, people are very keen to look for whether this is happening in people. And to date, there's been no evidence that that's right. So that will be the smoking gun. The smoking gun will be whether we ultimately see that this virus in humans has inserted its viral DNA next to a critical gene that causes a tumor in humans. And we have not yet seen evidence of that. But that would be the... the uh, the sign that this is really a, a causal uh, virus. So I think, you know, if we truly identify this new virus in humans, this old virus in mice and this new human, new virus in humans as, as causing something, and we don't know that, but if it does, I think there will be good um, routes to limit its effects, and that's, that's very encouraging. I'm imagining that with the identification of this new virus in humans, there have been a lot of folks looking for other associations with other cancers or other diseases. Besides prostate cancer, any other leads or areas where this virus might play an important role? Well, of course, the very exciting result in the field was the appearance a few months ago of the potential association of this virus with chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, and I think that is very exciting. I think it's it's still uh, a tentative correlation. We will. There are a lot of people working right now to try to either firm up or or deny that association. But um, this is the kind of uh, disease that one might imagine that a that a retrovirus like this might cause. It might cause uh, effects through uh, infecting cells of the blood, B cells, T cells, and it might well, uh, you could easily imagine that this would be a cause of, a, of the symptomology of, that we think of as, as chronic fatigue syndrome. So, uh, so people are, are very actively exploring that possibility now, trying to confirm or deny the initial report of this correlation. Um, and, I, you know, I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, there's there's the potential that a lot of diseases that we don't understand um, will ultimately be attributed to, to viral infections. Um, this would be one of the, the most uh, exciting, clear cases if it comes to pass. Well, Professor Stephen Goff, it's been fascinating talking with you. Thank you for giving us the time. Dr. Stephen Goff, Professor of Microbiology and Immunology and Biochemistry and Molecular Biophysics at Columbia University. We'll put a longer article about XMRV on our website at soundmedicine.iu.edu.